what's good y'all your boy ross back again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 great wrestling matches on terrible pay-per-views um by parts for known this is one of those situations where the pay-per-view like the car lineup could be god awful but it'll it'll be like one match that was like fantastic and and people will talk about that one particular match being the highlight of the show it is definitely has happened in the vince mcmahon era of pay-per-views where it would be at least for the most part at least one match that was like okay this is leagues above everything else everything else was kind of hit or miss or just completely missed but this one match definitely can sometimes even save the show sometimes it's better than the damn main event uh as of late triple h has been knocking these pay-per-views out the park there's been multiple matches that are worth checking out and i'm so glad that he's really gotten the format down of having these shows be short concise straight to the point but quite enjoyable i'm looking forward to what he does at the royal Rumble. i think he's going to kill that can't wait for that but we're gonna check this out my uh by uh parts for known i don't know i can't talk right now losing all uh motor functions <laughs> it seems like but let's get right into this video appreciate all the love sports let's do this thing. well if you're gonna make a bad wrestling show and as far as i know there have been a few bad wrestling shows over the years could you do mm -hmm. us all a favor and at least make the entire show bad gonna stink up the main event save our brains the time and effort by stinking up the rest of it then we can forget the whole thing and it's not taking up valuable real estate in our brains i can only remember five things at any given time so if i have to remember that a certain wrestling show is the absolute pits apart from one amazing match that just means i have to forget what my dad looks like shows like great american bash 2004 crown jewel 2018 great wonderful we can forget they ever happened and never think about them again unless you're a wrestling list writer of course and you're not allowed to forget anything and i nope. hate i hate my life but all the shows on this list honestly bollocks to you for having a soul redeeming feature that we might want to go back and re-watch sifting through the rest of the show like a prospector hunting for gold amongst the turds i am adam hailing from parts <laughs> unknown and here are 10 great matches from terrible pay-per-views but if you'd like to enjoy something that's all subscribe killer no parts for known. filler then why don't you subscribe to parts for unknown for more silly wrestling Wrestling content just like this. Number 10, Eddie Guerrero versus Six, sold out 1997. Oh, ah, yes. hell. Sold out 1997. The first major sign this whole New World Order thing was going to get a bit much. The red flags were all there. We didn't listen. This show sucks so hard. But weirdly, it was sort of supposed to. See, the gimmick of the show was it was produced by the NWO, not WCW, as a three hour long f you to the company. A three hour oh, long wow. f you that the fans had to pay for and watch, which is honestly as late 90s WCW as you can get. The show was a weird, ugly mess of WCW stars coming in, being called names, and fighting an NWO member for getting screwed. And of course, the whole show began with the NWO riding to the venue on garbage trucks and ended with a main event DQ. Talk about a show that knows what it wow. is. Screw you then, Eddie Guerrero and Six, aka X Park, for having an amazing ladder match for the Cruiserweight title right in the heart of the slog. It may not be the best ladder match ever, but on this show, this stanky ass show, it's the <laughs> Damn. best ladder match ever. Crisp, fast, hard-hitting cruiserweight fun number nine seth rollins versus the miz backlash 2018 imagine <laughs> you have a whole pay-per-view dedicated to just screwing over people bro that's wild the 90s was a different time <laughs> also known as a show where everyone beat the traffic but when you think about it if everyone leaves early to beat the traffic then nobody beats the traffic. Philosophical Facts. conundrums aside, Backlash 2018 blows. It's a show that should have been headlined by Styles versus Nakamura for the WWE Championship at this time doing it right, but they knew the finish of that match was so bad, and it was by the way, that they thought they'd save face by putting Roman versus Joe in the main event with nothing on the line. Cue everyone saying, "Ight, I'm a head out. The rest of the yeah. show is just so bland <laughs> Jax versus bliss orton versus hardy daniel bryan versus big cass anyone i remember that oh, anyone wow. it would be so easy to forget this show entirely if it wasn't for seth rollins and the miz those assholes who had won the best ic title matches of the year in the opener 20 minutes of strong workhorse storytelling escalating perfectly to a blistering finish heartbreaking that the show peaked in the very first match but if you think about yeah. it if you left after that match you really could have beaten the traffic number eight the usos match battleground 2014 and battleground 2017 god bless the usos or in case of this list i guess screw you the usos who could be credited for saving not one but two battlegrounds a paper you yeah the usos boy before they became you know 
in, integrated into the bloodline. They were having some some bangers, as Sheamus was saying. They they stayed saving a lot of shows and and stealing a lot of shows. They they. So one thing about the Usos, man, they is is I, I would say before them joining Roman Reigns, they were pretty good. You know, in the sense of they could have some great, fantastic matches, you know, and, you know, it, it's one of those type of things where I think a lot of people appreciated them, but I don't think they appreciated them as much as we see them now in the light that they're in now, which is, is pretty cool. The format so routinely terrible, it took four years for WWE to actually produce a good one. Battleground 2014 was a total non-entity of a show, existing purely to spin wheels between Money in the Bank and SummerSlam. And then there's the Usos versus the Wyatts, two out of three falls, casually one of the best tag matches of the year. Miss you all the time, Mr. Brody Lee. For but sure, that nothing show pales in comparison to Battleground 2017, which is so bad it has a 27 minute long punjabi prison match Didn't as watch its that. main event it's a show so bad they haven't done a battleground since that was five years ago and then Good. there's the usos versus the new day casually yep. having one of the best tag matches of the year in the best tag team feud of the year on yep. the Uso, stop it. Stop making us remember Battleground. Number seven, the Brothers Rhodes versus the Shield Battleground 23rd. That, oh my God, that was one of the best matches. That was one of the best matches that year. I remember that match like it was yesterday. That match was so good. The emotion was so good. Oh, take me back. That match was good. Don't give a damn about the, I don't even remember the show. That match was great. That match was great. 13. F***ing Battleground, though. Will you f*** off? The first iteration of the pay-per-view is one of the worst. You might remember it from my most hated matches of all time. Let's hey, go and watch that if you haven't already. The list, I mean, not Battleground. That shows a D's nuts lasagna of insulting, booking, boring matches and Ryback. Curtis Axel versus R-Truth on that show. Sweet baby Lord. But for some reason, on this awful show, with potentially one of the worst main events WWE have ever produced, there's once again a tag match here to save the day. The show. Oh versus Cody Rhodes and Goldust with their sweet old dad in tow. That the Rhodes needing good. to win the match or their careers would be over. It rules so hard. So a burst good. of undiluted, uncomplicated, feel-good wrestling emotion in a morass of overbooking and inconsequential matchups. The roar of the crowd when the Rhodes win is pure and thoroughly earned. It is a beauty. Rest Thankfully, peace. by this time next year... Rest in peace, Dusty, man. Oh, my God, bro. This was such a good match. I remember watching this live. The crowd went crazy when Dusty hit Dean Ambrose with the bionic elbow, I believe. Oh, my God, bro. That shit was so good, bro. And then when Cody hit the, the crossroads. Oh, my God. That shit was so good. Cody Rhodes would have been repackaged as Stardust because WWE like to fix things that aren't broken. And when I say fix, I mean like you fix a dog. Number six, Triple H versus The Undertaker, WrestleMania 27. A serious mm -hmm. contender for worst WrestleMania of all time. And considering there's 38 of them, that is yeah. saying something. The show that was main evented by Bam Bam Bigelow versus a football player, that WrestleMania is better than this one because that WrestleMania didn't have its main event restarted by a laptop. Nothing on yeah. WrestleMania 27 <laughs> stands out in a good way. Cole versus Lawler. No. Awful. Miz versus Cena. Computer says no. Edge versus Del Rio. Unremarkable. Uh. Sorry, that was your last pay-per-view match for ages, Edge. The Core had a match. Do you remember The Core? Do you, do you remember The Core? They had a WrestleMania match. It's, it's f***ing. Snooki had one. Stop yep. it. There's only one good memory from WrestleMania 27, yep. and that's Taker versus Triple H in a no-holds-barred match. It's a Triple H Mania match, so it's too long, but it goes hard with a King yep. of Kings straight murdering the dead man in front yep. of a whole lot of witnesses. And hey, that false finish when Trips gives Taker the tombstone, that is wonderful business. Really annoying. I really thought it was over there, and fucking JR calling it was great. This was a fun match. I thought it was over. When he hit the two, I was like, okay, it's it's over. He, he won. He finally beat him. The streak is over. My God, it's not. Oh, that was great. Knowing that the match is so key to the end of an era build at Mania 28, mm -hmm. it forces us to remember the year before. 
hate it, boo. Number five, the Hardys versus the Dudleys versus Edge and Christian, WrestleMania 2000. Yep. This WrestleMania is also a wet sneeze and a lift. In a year when WWE had potentially its greatest roster ever, for some reason, maybe to fulfill the whole 2000 branding, because everything had to be 2000 sized back then and radical munger, the whole card is stuffed with multi-man matches that don't mean half a bollock and an awful crowd baiting horror show of a main event with the heels going over. There is one singles match on the card and it's the women's stink face match. <laughs> totally tubular. You could argue that the Euro Continental triple threat match is good, but it's loads shorter than you remember. It's all done in eight minutes. There's one spark of joy, just one on the whole show, but what a spark it is. The prelude to TLC, the triangle ladder match between Edge and Christian, the Hardys and the Dudleys was an unbridled joy of car mm -hmm. crash mayhem and the kind of tag stunt work that defined a generation. Like the DX band that opened the show, WrestleMania 2000 only hit one right note, but they hit it loud. Mm -hmm. Number four, Bret Hart versus Steve Austin, WrestleMania 13. And rounding off our terrible manias, but for one match, Classic trendy, match. WrestleMania 13. Legendary match. Undertaker versus Psycho Sid is potentially the quietest a crowd has ever been during a WrestleMania main event. If the <laughs> pin had dropped, it would have deafened people in a two block radius. What else was on the card, you ask? Rocky Maivia versus the Sultan. <laughs> a god awful gang war street fight. The Headbangers winning the tag titles. Remember that? Triple H versus Gold Dust. <laughs> All right. And what else was on the card? Oh, that's right. One of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Mm -hmm. Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. The catalyst for Austin to become potentially the best babyface of all time. What yep. many people see as the unofficial birthplace of the Attitude Era and an instant five-star classic. Genuinely, the match is so good that WrestleMania 13 sometimes appears on lists of greatest WrestleManias yeah, just because, because of this match. moment. Yep. And that's an injustice, the likes of which I can't stands. I can't stands no more. Number three, Sean Michael. Michaels versus Razor Ramon, SummerSlam 1995. Oh, bollocks though. For most of the shows on this list, WWE didn't go into the pay-per-view thinking the entire thing was going to be a wank supper. Not the case of SummerSlam 95, which was a show so unutterably awful that they literally parachuted this rematch from WrestleMania 10 in at the last minute because oh, with wow. their roster that year crippled by the steroid trial and WCW poaching their talent, they had nothing else. Oh. Literally, up until a week or two before the show, HBK was supposed to defend the title against Sid. Dodged a bullet there. Hakushi vs. <laughs> 123 Kid is on this card. This what Summer Slam card. And it's one of the better matches. They've got Brett versus the fing dentist. And the less said about the main event, the better. Mr. Slow and Mr. Bad falling over each other like two drunks trying to help each other. Possibly <laughs> one of the worst major shows WWE ever made. And one that should be forever consigned to history's dustbin were it not for the really annoyingly good ladder match between Sean Where's and Razor. In some ways, uh, it's even Scott better Hall. than the first one. And it's just there making you watch bits of SummerSlam 1995. And speaking of HBK, number two, Shawn Michaels versus Mankind in your house mind games. The in your house pay-per-views were mostly bad, sweeping statement. They were created <laughs> to compete with WCW's increased output shows and also to provide a shorter, cheaper alternative to the big four pay-per-view. Some big matches to pop a buy rate, but otherwise save the good stuff for the top dollar shows. And it does make sense, but I do wish WWE hadn't made most of them. Terrible shows cram head to toe with filler and diesel. In your house <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly easy. that kind of show. Which of these matches thrills you? <laughs> Savio Vega versus Bradshaw? Green as baby sh Mark Henry versus Jerry Waller, Jose Lothario versus Jim Cornette. What? For real, the show <laughs> sucks and could have gone down as the worst show of the year if not for the main event, Shawn Michaels versus Mankind, which goes like a freight train. The lads not the piss out of each other, with Mankind taking horrendous punishment, as you'd expect, getting his neck on the ropes, both men flying through the announce table at ringside in an era where that was rare, and a jumping mm -hmm. sweet chin music off a chair, through a chair. Michaels is fantastic as a scared baby face driven to a Extremes and mankind is kept strong in a DQ loss as an unstoppable, unput downable. Wow. Match. Plus, it ends with a fab spooky spot from a teleporting taker. Makes <laughs> a match on a deeply, deeply crap show. And number one, John Cena versus Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar, Royal Rumble 2015. That, that's a good number one. I can't even get mad at that number one. That match was fantastic. Woo, that was a good match. You haven't seen that match? Go watch it. Go watch it. Dude. Ah, WWE. This pay-per-view is a perfect example of, even during the darkest times, why we could never quit you. On a show so wretched that hashtag cancel WWE yep. network trended worldwide, which is the kind of grassroots publicity you just can't buy, WWE also put on potentially the greatest triple threat match 
in the company's history. That shit was so good. It's either amazing or terrible, and you'll never know unless you tune in. Cena, Rollins, and Lesnar put together a stormer. Cena is the resilient, uncomplicated good guy, always happy to walk into danger because he's so simple. Rollins is a nippy coward, always content to feed his henchmen to the wolves, and Brock Lesnar has all the wolves in the world. Honestly, go <laughs> back and watch it. It is even better than you remember. Yeah. So many wonderful near falls, so many high spots. JJ yep. Security eats so much shit. Lesnar is a legitimately scary slasher monster. Cena and Rollins having all all-time great chemistry with each other. The joy of the Philly fans hating on Cena so very much while still being all in on the Suplex City shtick. It's yep. blockbuster in all the best ways. The right guy wins, and the crowd are so, so happy. Nah, after that was good. WWE can go from the buzz after a match of the year candidate to hashtag cancel mm -hmm. WWE Network in the space of just one hour goes to show how much people hate the 20. I forgot Royal that Rumble. was that same Royal Rumble. I watched it. I forgot that match. I was like, yo, this match is great. I was looking forward to the Royal Rumble. It was that same Royal Rumble, bro, where they was like, nah, this is, this is screw WWE. <laughs> this is the thing about WWE, especially in the Vince McMahon era. You would find he would have one match that you're just like, yo, this is great. Can't wait for the rest of the show. And the rest of the show is could be just dog shit bad so you'd be like what the, what the hell is this or you go the whole show and it's awful and then that one match you'd be like, oh man it's pretty good so yeah man hey this was a good list definitely brought me back down memory lane on some of these uh uh some of these uh selections man comment down below let me know what's your favorite i guess match from a terrible pay-per-view if you have one that wasn't listed on here for me it gotta be the Battlegrounds pay-per-view uh, with uh, the Rose Brothers versus uh, The Shield. I, I'm telling you this now. I may go back and watch this after I'm done recording this because the match was so damn good. The story you were invested in because you didn't want them to get fired. Bro, this shit was good. The, this is when the authority was running high. They were, they were pretty much, you know, the authority had The Shield in their back pocket. So they were running amok on, on Monday Night Raw. Like, it was just crazy bro and to see them win and to see dusty with them it was such a great moment crowd went crazy i went crazy probably one of the best crossroads ever all that shit was good the story leading up to it cody attacking the shield you know them getting fired potentially oh this was great i'm i'm literally probably gonna go watch that match that's my favorite match from a trash pay-per-view but comment down below let me know but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all keeping with me see y'all next week